start every cold call with a permission-based opener. Here are three that I really like. Number one, hey Chris, this is Matt with IBM. Chris, I know you were not expecting my call. You mind if I steal 30 seconds to tell you why I called and you could let me know if you wanna keep chatting. Number two, Chris, appreciate you taking the call. Chris, listen, you're probably gonna hate me for this. This is a cold call. Do you wanna hang up or can I steal 30 seconds to tell you why I called? And number three, Hi, Chris, this is Matt, and this is a cold call. Wanna roll the dice? Yes. Oh, I got you, yep, can you hear me? Yes, there you are, all right. Hello, hey, yes, <laughs> I know I'm catching you out of the blue here. This this actually is a cold call. <laughs> Mind if I share why I'm calling you, and then you can decide if you wanna hang up? <laughs> sure, sounds great. <laughs> awesome. I guess before I do my whole like dog and pony show here, I should probably ask you, are you already thinking about or invested in any outbound strategy at SDRs or external services? Um, yeah, we have one on staff. Uh, I mean, um, we're probably not a good fit for you just because our, our, uh, sales cycle is very long. Our deal size is very big. And so it's less about volume and more about quality. Uh, Large ASPs is exactly what we specialize in. My name is Ronan Passar. I'm one of the co-founders at The Call Guys. Hey, out of curiosity, I know you just mentioned you already have one SDR on staff here. Is that person able to get you to like four to five X coverage of the pipeline that you're going for in a predictable manner? No. No worries. That's actually why I was reaching out. Have you ever considered working with consultants who have built SDR teams for other companies that can help you have more predictability through proven processes and techniques? Anything like that ever cross your radar? Yeah, I mean, we've tried a couple of things. I, I think the problem for us is that you really, like, in order to actually get a meeting in our space, you really have to be like, you have to have deep expertise in mm. what we do. And, uh, you know, an outsourced version of that just hasn't ever really worked for us um, because of that, you, you know, that expertise is just so crucial to actually getting a meeting. Totally, yeah. Actually, we're not outsourced. We would be in-house consultants. Essentially, what we do at the call, guys, just to clarify, is that we'd come in for six or nine months and just help you stand up an internal SDR team built the way that I was able to build one at a unicorn tech company from almost nothing to now over 120 million ARR. So the same processes that we've learned over the course of our careers, we'd help you build out the same one for your stage of company. Look, I, I know I'm catching you out of the blue here. Actually, the reason for my call is to, to find a better time. It would be like totally insane if we did a quick eval with you sometime next week to see if we might even be able to help. Um, man, I mean, my schedule is terrible. I'm probably not even like the exact right person to be talking to. Um, I mean, I'm the one that wants more deals through the pipeline for sure. But <laughs> just to confirm, are you, you are the CEO, right? You're overseeing. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know how you couldn't be the right person. I'm going to call BS on that. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you know, I have people on my team that are, uh, that bear responsibility for that pipeline. That, uh, well, that's, that's actually know. great. We, we don't want to work with companies that don't already have people responsible for that. So that, that makes it even more of a fit, but look, I, I don't want to strong arm you into anything. If you're not looking for ways to do create that consistent, predictable pipeline, no stress at all. Like I totally get timing is everything here, but if you'd be open to hearing a few ideas, no strings attached and just getting a chance to meet myself and my partner, Kevin, how would maybe this time next week on Tuesday look for you? Uh, how about, uh, I, I mean, uh, rather than put time on my calendar, which is precious, um, would love just like, if you can send me like, uh, an overview or even just like the website and I can you know, get a sense of what you're doing. Um, and then I would probably introduce you to my chief growth officer, um, who is, uh, thinking about this problem. Um, I mean, I'm happy to come to a meeting once she, you know, sort of takes a look and yeah. Um, I could use the time. Fair enough. I just sent you a connect request on LinkedIn. My LinkedIn, I feel like really speaks for me more than anything else. So take a look at that. And your chief growth officer is the one who would ultimately be the one overseeing a program like this, if I'm understanding correctly. That's true. Yep. Okay, great. Well, I'll tell you what, I just sent that connect request. And, and to be honest with you, I have done this a long time, as you can tell. And every time I send an email to someone, I have still never heard back from anyone. So, <laughs> shocker <laughs> so, would it be really like too insane if we just found some time to pencil in um 
after, of course, you would get a chance to, to take a peek at maybe my LinkedIn profile and see if something like what I do might be a fit. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to put them on the calendar right now. Uh, but yeah, let me let me chat with about it and, um, and get back to you. I'm not interested. The most common objection you will get when you're making cold calls. Here are three different techniques to use when you get hit with I'm not interested to handle it to hopefully book a meeting on that cold call. Number one, use a label. Matt, I'm not interested. Chris, it sounds like I completely butchered this pitch here. Number two, an accusation audit. Matt, I'm not interested. Chris, you probably think I'm gonna try to sell you something you have no need for whatsoever. Or number three, Matt, I'm not interested. Chris, no worries. I actually thought you wouldn't be interested when I picked up the phone to call you today. Before you hang up, I'm curious, is it that you already have something in place right now that you're happy with, have more pressing things on your plate? Or Chris, do you just hate getting cold calls as much as I hate making them? Let's see what happens. Here we go. See ya. Yeah. Well, if she picks up. How many rings do you guys let it go? Hmm? Or do the Jeopardy. Do, 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 oh. do. How important are voicemails? Do you any voicemails? Um, I really, you know, unless I've taught you before, I don't really leave you a voicemail. Unless there's something really interesting that I see. You yeah, know? you could do that. Do you want to, I mean, just yeah, just call it. No Is she nice? <laughs> we're gonna have to get her we're gonna have to get her to like sign something maybe like okay. I, mean, I mean let's just see it let's try it he's he's obviously good so he might be able to sell her is your mom a realtor yeah out in Tucson Arizona she's my new client <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want you don't need to we're calling uh, Ilana right now or Elena Sometimes I mess up people's names on purpose. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so, do you want to do it? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's, call, like, let's, call, let's call your mom. Right. This is great. I feel like we're pranking someone. We're bring the phone up here. Let's call her. What's her name? I don't know, because she'll know. Oh, it's me. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it, got it. We'll walk it out. 520. Okay, one, beep, five, beep, two, beep. zero. Does she have a Facebook business page? Uh, I think she's on Facebook. She has her own. She's with Long Realty, so I think that they do a lot. Okay, so can you pull up her page so I can yeah. educate her on her page? What's her name? Nancy. Nancy. And she's in Tucson? Humor's good, too. I forgot to tell you about that. Humor. <laughs> That's a secret weapon, too. Hello? Nancy? Yes. Nancy, it is Andrew Kleiman, and I am an absolute stranger, so don't rack your brain trying to figure it out. I don't know you. You don't know me. A complete stranger here. Um, are you able to talk for a brief moment? Uh, I have about a minute. Oh, beautiful. That's all I need. Okay, wonderful. Look, I was online, and I was doing some research for another realtor in Tucson, and I actually came across your name. So I wanted to find out, are you still doing real estate, or are you doing it as a hobby, or are you doing it as a career? Um, I'm doing it full-time. Okay, you're doing it full-time. Okay, wonderful. Um, I know that you said I had a minute, so I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I do do marketing for realtors. I help you guys with web, social, and more. And my quick question was, do you have any personal interest in improving your web presence for the future? Because I know it's like really, really, really hot market out there. You guys are doing very well. And I just wanted to see if I could get a, some time with you another day and let you interview me. You're the boss. I'm just applying for the job. Um, and just interview me and see what I have to offer. But I, I really feel like there's an asset in me helping you. Um, first of all, I like your style. It's nice because I haven't hung up on you yet, so awesome. Second of all, I have a really good friend who is doing the same thing, who is uh, trying to get me to do the same thing, and so I've um, just started working with her. We've just started a business Facebook page, doing a few things, and uh, so honestly, I'll, I'll work with 
I, I know I need some help, and so I'll be working with her, though. This is heartbreaking. I, I, I'm actually crying right now. I'm, I'm Nancy. You know, uh, unfortunately, I was taught a long time ago that I got to get at least 20 no's. We're only on no one right now. Okay. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Look, look, here's the deal. I'm a, I'm a good team player, right? I, I used to play football for years. I grew up here in San Diego. Most of my friends played professional football. Um, my good friend, Leroy Glover, is actually getting introduced into the Hall of Fame. You probably know a lot of my friends. You know Marsha Falk? No, I don't. Okay, you're not a football buff. Okay, fine, whatever. Bottom line is, I'm all about teamwork. Um, if you have someone that is going to participate in helping you grow your life and your business, First of all, congratulations, because Realtors work so hard, and I know that you guys put a lot of time and energy into just learning new tools and new technology. Um, so cheers to you for even taking a leap of faith, uh, paying her to do that. How much are you, are you paying her? Just Is this like 1500 a month? Is this 2000 How much you gotta pay to make her do all this stuff for you? Oh, well, um, in addition to her, I also have a coach. <laughs> so I am well ingrained in that I need help. Okay. So. Rewind. How much are you paying this coach? Because I know what coaches charge. I travel quite a bit around the country. The last coach I met was charging six thousand dollars. My coach isn't quite that expensive, but you know what? My time is truly up. I have a client walking fine. in. Fine. Okay. And I've got to go, but I like your style. I think you're going to do fine. And. Here's your no. I'm sorry. Okay, that's only two. We got like 18 more to go. We'll try this another yeah. day. <laughs> I still got 18 right. more opportunities. Okay, bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> the goal of a cold call is not to set a meeting. If that was the goal, you as an SDR, as an account executive, as a business owner, when you're making your cold calls, you're going to be setting meetings with unqualified prospects that don't fit your ICP, your ideal customer profile, that do not have a problem. This is the most important thing that do not have a problem your product or service can solve. So you're going to be setting meetings with people that are wasting your time and their time. The goal of a cold call is to have a conversation. If that conversation goes in a direction where the prospect wants to meet with you, is interested in your product or service, has a problem that your product or service can solve, fits your ideal customer profile, awesome, book the meeting. If not, if you're not a fit, if they're not a fit, invite yourself out of the call, hang up and call somebody new. When you go into your cold call sessions with the mentality, with the mindset, I need to book a meeting in this one hour cold call block, that's going, going to be forcing your agenda on the prospect, number one, and number two, it's gonna put a lot of undue pressure on yourself. The goal is to have conversations, not book meetings. Hey, it's Ronan at Stylo. This is actually a cold call. You wanna roll the dice? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that is really funny um great opener i have to give it to you um sure why not a two-step objection handling process to handle the objection on a cold call matt we already have a vendor for that first step i'm going to label chris it sounds like you're super happy with xyz that's gonna elicit more information out of the prospect, the chances are high, they're probably gonna come back and say, we're happy, but it's not perfect, and give you some ammunition on that cold call to hopefully book a meeting. The second step in that process is I'm gonna use an accusation audit. Chris, you're probably gonna think this is a complete waste of time because you're super happy with XYZ Company, but would it be a ridiculous idea at some point in the next two weeks to explore if there are opportunities beyond what you have in place today that might not be on your radar to accomplish XYZ. That way, Chris, if your situation changes at some point down the road, you have a vendor in your back pocket you could call. You can let me know if it's Ron Pessar with Silo. You're actually not expecting this call. It's the first time I've tried to reach you. Mind if I share why I'm calling? You can let me know if it's relevant or not. Sure. I appreciate that. Out of curiosity, are you using a tool like Zendesk or Salesforce for your ticketing today? Salesforce. Okay, great. This next question isn't a gotcha or anything, but do you have a way of knowing of all the tickets and cases, which one was the most urgent to get to this week? Yes, I do. Very cool. A lot of people I speak with don't, which is why I'm calling. How are you guys doing that? 
We've got our own in-house customer health score and triaging mechanism. Beautiful. That's kind of what Stylo does. I don't know if this would be of interest to you, but essentially we're using NLP to auto-tag all your cases for you with relevant terms that reference back to And then we also assign sentiment like frustration and urgency, kind of all done for you in real time. Any interest in taking a look sometime? Possibly in the future. Right now, I'm pretty happy with what we got, and I don't have a lot of budget for any extra software at the moment. Yeah, totally understand that. Just one last question for you. When it comes to relaying what you're learning and support back to products, is that part of what you're able to do today with your current setup? We do some of that with the data that we collect from the support cases, and then collaborative workshops with the product team. Okay, cool. The reason I ask is that's also part of the value. Silo uh, is able to plug in and then also give you that reporting on the back end so that you can see those trends in real time as they unfold and communicate the more urgent stuff to work on for product and engineering. That's interesting. Do you want to send me some more information? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. To be totally honest with you, I do this a lot and usually I send something and and that's kind of it. I never heard back from someone. Would it be totally crazy to put 20 or 30 minutes on the calendar at some point when you have a few minutes to take a look? Usually this time in the afternoon, Thursday or Friday next week. If you're looking for the best cold call scripts on the internet, how to handle every objection on a cold call, check out the ultimate cold call guide in the description of this video. Cold calling is scary. Here's how to handle the nerves. First off, I've been cold calling for seven years now. I get nervous before every cold call session. I get very nervous. I used to think of nerves in a negative light and that was completely wrong. You need to start using nerves to your advantage because number one, when you're nervous, it shows that you care about what you're about to do. I'm invested in this cold call session. And number two, more importantly, it locks me in. When I'm nervous, I have my full attention on what I'm about to do. That cold call session, use your nerves to your advantage. The nerves are never gonna go away. The fear does over time with frequency of dials. That's the second point, guys. You have to be patient with yourself. I get so many DMs on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, pretty much on a weekly basis. Hey, Matt, I've been cold calling for two days. I haven't booked any meetings. I'm terrified to pick the phone up. Guys, it is going to take a very, very, very long time to get good and comfortable with cold calling, where the fear subsides and it's just nerves. It's going to take time. Frequency of dials will get you there. The three second rule, you need to start using this today. When you're making cold calls, somebody hangs up on you. Count to three, one, two, three. You're picking that phone up, calling the next person. The longer you wait in between a bad call and a hang up and the next call, the harder it is to pick that phone up. That phone feels like it's a hundred pounds and you haven't been to the gym in a long time. The three second rule, whenever you're nervous to do something, cold calling here, one, two, three, do it. Use that to your advantage. Be patient with yourself and nerves are a good thing. If this is similar to the culture of your company, run. Oh, that's for okay. increasing business. Okay. Just be making phone calls, dude. Okay. All right. Can okay, you on a timer, son? Yeah. Who, who, who's your team lead? Uh, Todd. Todd. Yep. Todd. Okay, well, what about this then? So, hey, I got, dis- I got disconnected. I was trying to get a hold of Bill. Business. We'll give you a 30 day out. If we can't okay, pick you up 15% uh, junior. business, Cheers. you contract okay. ends. We'll cancel the terms. Where's your script Give at? us 30 days to help your guys. <laughs> Fuck it, dude, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need you remembering it. I need you reading it, we'll okay? We'll I need you reading the script the way I want it done, okay? Make the calls. Yep. You're my best guy, right? Yeah. What, what does that mean, yeah? Hi, is this Bill? Okay, good. So I'll reach back out with you. And oh, Bill Jr., hey, it's uh, Mike Bonnet from Grant on. Cardone's and offices. Then, we spoke know, the just, other day. We'll do that. We, if we can train your guys. Help I'm doing very well. Hey, up. listen, I just wanted to see if we can uh, catch up and uh, get five minutes of your time you know, do to show you Grant's program. You know, we'll cancel the contract, but when should I circle back with you? I wanted to. I wanted okay, you so, to personally call. Okay, me. sounds great, John. That's right, what we'll the script says. Well, I pers- uh, Grant personally wanted me to call you to get five oh, yeah, minutes of your time to, to show you the program. How are you today? Gee, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, When's a better time to call you back? I saw that you were looking for some information regarding Cardone University and wanted to see what type of details I could pass your way. Yeah, that's fine. Two, two o'clock or three o'clock? Make it 3 p.m.? Sure, no problem. Sir. All right, perfect. Are you actually going to give me a real 10 minutes to show this to you at 3 p.m.? Would you be looking for information on just for yourself as, you know, one user? Or do you have a No, actually, you you're right. That, I apologize for that. All I need is five minutes to show it to you. Okay, perfect. At 3 no p.m.? No problem at all. 
Right. So, okay, um, look, what it is is look forward to seeing you, you then. Go to get access to All right, bye-bye. 24 hours okay. a day, seven look, days a week to be your This is the deal, dude. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you're bouncing. Coach. I'm bouncing. Okay. Now we got to get you good. You okay. You want to get good? <laughs> I want to get awesome. I want to okay. be a massive salesperson. Okay, I need you to follow the script. I need you to stay in the chair. Okay. I need you running down the hall, all right. running all over the place. That has no value. All right. Right. Okay. I know you think it does something to you and makes you better. It doesn't. You need to just... Right here, dude. Okay. okay. All right. You pound. You pound. Frequency. You right. got to be frequent before you're going to be great. All right. You're never going to be great on a handful of phone calls. Okay. okay. So when people say it's not a numbers game, it's bullshit. It okay. is numbers because it starts breaking your. You need numbers to get great. Okay. okay. So you need to get to this in the call. Hey, I'm calling because Mr. Cardone wants me to give you something. Okay. Okay. Yep. What, what's he want? What's he want to give me? He wants to give you a pro. He he's created a sales tool that can increase sales 15 to 40 percent. Yep, within the first 30 days. Okay. It's not a bit, I'm telling you, it's not an over exaggeration. Okay. But before I do that, I need to know a few things, sir, to be sure this can help you. Okay. I'm going to give you the script. It's right here. All you got to do is read off this. You don't need to write it again. Oh, okay. will you t take a note? I'm going to do it right now. Right. I'm going to my fusion shop and I'm just going to just hammer. Okay. Okay, good. I'm going to hammer good, everybody. Good. What are the two things like that your sales team could benefit from? What are the two problems? What's that one magical problem? What's that thing, that one thing that sits in your ass that bothers you every day? What you pisses got you off? And, 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 then, and then it's going to be good. Okay. Okay. When can, when can I show you this? Okay. Okay? Yep. I'm hammering. Okay. You got you got a timer? Does he have a timer? Everybody in here needs timers, Todd. Got it. I want so the little cook timer. Okay? I want the cook timer in 15 minutes to find out how many fucking phone calls got he's making. Because okay. if he can't manage to control so his when time, you actually right. do find somebody So these guys are running off the clock. They, they don't even know what time it is. Dude. Everybody needs a cook a, 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 a cook timer. Get everybody a cook timer. Cook timer, sit on the desk at 45. Make them at 15 minutes. Here we go. Let's roll. Let's roll. Let's go. Make calls. I do agree with what Grant said in the video about frequency. The more you do something, cold calling, for example, over time, the better you're going to get. But I do not agree with the culture. I do not agree with that pressure cooker environment. That's a boiler room environment. It probably worked back in the 80s and 90s. That does not work in 2023. That would demotivate me if that's your culture you need to run. Nothing is more annoying when you're on a cold call and your sales manager, your boss, is sitting right next to you trying to tell you what to say while you're on the phone it, it's absolutely awful and also it's never good to tell somebody you have to say these exact words this is the script you need to abide by this script because the words that i use the words that work for me the words that come out naturally for me might not come out naturally for you have frameworks in place for your sdrs and your aes to make cold calls do not have defined scripts that they have to follow word for word you successfully delivered your permission-based opener Here's what you say next. So look, transitioning from that opener into the next stage, and that's kind of what I want to talk about here. So here's what I really like about this approach. You go from, hey, can I tell you why I'm calling Matt? And then you can decide if you want to hang up on me. Pro tip, if you say that with like a little bit of a, a laugh, so it sounds like, uh, it's Ronan from Silo. Hey, look, Matt, I know nobody likes getting a cold call, especially not the Friday after New Year's. Can I tell you why I'm calling? And then you can decide if you want to hang up on me. Gotta have that in there. Yep. That gets them Modality. feeling light. It's yeah. friendly. And then you go into it and they say, sure, go ahead. Here's my next favorite transition question. Hey, have you heard of Stylo before? Or in your case, hey, have you heard of my company before? IBM, Acme Corporation, wherever you're calling from. Now, here's why I love this question. If they say yes, you just follow up with a very natural, logical next question. Oh, awesome. Like, how did you hear about us? Have you worked with us before? Like, what's your relationship like? You might already have a warm prospect. If they say no, then you're able to transition right into three questions. And this is a framework. You can steal it. I, I hope you do. It's easy to use. Um, I train people on how to write these kinds of scripts for these three questions, and it always works better than going right into a pitch slap. Now, if pitch you know what a pitch slap is, yep. it's exactly yep. what it sounds like. Painful. Your prospect doesn't like it. You're just smacking them with a the pitch. And the good thing is, 
every other salesperson is doing a pitch slap. Nobody else, unless you watch a video like this and get coached up by Ronan, is going to use these three questions on their cold call. And so here's my three questions. The first one is a yes, no question. Hang on a second. Every guru out there is telling me to ask open-ended questions. Why would I ask them a yes, no question? Because this is the way to get the conversation rolling. So I'll give you the uh, example with the last company I worked for, Stylo, where it's a Zendesk plugin for customer support people. And it would sound like this. Hey, out of curiosity, are you still using Zendesk today as your ticketing system? Yes. No. So the way that you want to ask that question is a current state today. Is this something that you're doing? It's kind of like opening up the ballpark of the topic and the theme you're going to talk about. If I were doing this on behalf of, let's say, uh, Tesla, I'm selling a Tesla and I'm cold calling for some reason. I say to someone like, Hey, out of curiosity, are you already driving an electric vehicle today? Yes. No. Yes, no. Yeah. Right. Cause if they are, they are already, already bought into your thing that you're offering them. The next question in the framework is meant to be provocative. This is kind of like that moment at the end of eight mile. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it at the end oh, of eight God. mile. So good. So <laughs> good. What did Eminem do when he was coming up as a, a new rapper? Yeah, he brought up all the objections or all the things that the other rapper might say about him. He took his thunder and he had nothing to say in response. Eminem was an up and coming scrappy rapper. No one really knew who he was, but he was good. And one of the things he did in his early days, if you're a fan of his music, is, and I feel like some of the Gen Z people are like, who's that? Um, That's not good. That's not good. If that is you, you need to unsubscribe from this channel. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but one of the stories about him that went, that became the core theme of the movie Eight Mile, which is uh, based on his life story, yeah. is he would do rap battles, these underground rap battles. And that's kind of how he got discovered. And in these battles, you're going back and forth and back and forth and dissing the other person. And whoever has the baddest diss about the other person wins if they sound the best. So he came up with this clever tactic. He was like, hang on a second. If I rap about myself and how bad I am, the other guy is going to totally stumble. He'll have nothing left to say. And if he stumbles, that's a technical knockout. I win. Yep. Again, spoiler alert. I'm so sorry if you haven't seen the movie. But you haven't seen it at this point, guys. Come on. Come on. Now. So in that moment, Eminem does his thing, drops the mic. Yep. So I didn't coin this term. This is from a good friend of mine, Bilal. He's an excellent oh, yeah. sales, uh, brilliant guy when it comes to sales tips. Follow him on LinkedIn. And he calls this the mic drop moment. And this is specifically for cold calls. It's a provocative question that you drop the mic. And so the question in my case, and I teach people how to write these, here's the tips. No marketing jargon. If marketing gave you the script, just light it on fire. Mm -hmm. Zero marketing. It should be so clear and simple that your cousin who's in fourth grade or your grandmother can understand it. So simple English no big words. Yep. Big words. Keep it as simple as you can. And the, the goal is clarity and provocation. How provoking can it be? And so here's what it sounds like in my case. So we just said yes or no. Are you using Zendesk? And I'm talking to customer support people in this case, leaders. And then I follow up if they say yes with, hey, out of curiosity, it's a good lead. Out of curiosity, do you have a way of identifying which customer left their support interaction with your team feeling the most frustrated out of the thousands of interactions your support team handled last month? So basically I'm asking, can you spot a na needle in a haystack? Yep. And the reason why this is provocative for my persona is because it's a hard thing to do. If you deal with a bunch of tickets, people writing in, they're upset. How do you find the one that's the worst? And like the reason why support leaders want that is because they want to keep track of quality control. That's really important in that world. Uh, so in your, in the case of 
Tesla, I'm selling electric vehicles. Here we I go. Say, <laughs> I'm just going off the top of my head on this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they say something like, um, yeah, I have actually bought an electric vehicle. Hey, out of curiosity, have you ever considered the possibility of having a luxury sports car that is also entirely electric? Because the big gripe with yeah. electric vehicles before Tesla came yeah, around was they, they're slow. <laughs> yeah. They're not sexy. They don't go super fast, but Tesla changed all that. Now, so Conan, how, how long does it typically take you to come up with this mic drop question? Because you just came up with that one for Tesla in seconds. Does it typically take a long time to develop that question? So here's why it's going to be hard for most of the people watching this to do it for themselves. Yeah. Most people watching this have the curse of knowledge. They know too much already about their product. Mm -hmm. They know too much about their prospects pain points. This is why when I help my clients do this, it's so easy for me because I'm not so close to the product. So I can see it, synthesize it and summarize it in about 15 minutes, going through two, three iterations until we hit a good one. And then I usually do a rewrite as well. And I'm super happy to work through uh, scripts if anyone wants to come up with one of these. Um, it's, I love doing it. So I'm happy to feel free to reach out. How about this, guys? How about come up with your mic drop question and put it in the comment section of me and Ronan. We'll look at it and Ronan will give some coaching on it. Let's do it. I love that. So that's the second question. And you're not done because now there's the final piece. So we just did a the first question was current state. Yes or no. Here's like, just tell me the landscape, is this it? Second one is still current state. Do you have a way, means today, can you do this thing? And the question is meant to provoke some thought. Now it's okay if you go off a little bit onto a rabbit hole, onto a trail that's a little bit different than booking a meeting, because this is usually where the conversation starts to warm up. And they might say something like, yeah, I have a way of doing that, but it's a antiquated old school solution that you solve. Or no, I haven't, really done anything there but i thought about maybe looking into it now you can start to ask some follow-up questions go into it that's okay but you still have one more part to get to yep. before you can get that meeting and this is asking a question that helps bridge the future possibility with their current self and ask basically is that gap between your future and your current self big enough that you're willing to find a way to solve it and here's the way it would sound uh, with my example with the Zendesk uh, example and Stylo, I would say, have you ever considered using artificial intelligence that reads through all of your tickets in real time, labeling them with emotional scores, things like frustration and urgency? That way you could be alerted the moment a customer writes in and is furious and therefore prevent them from starting a full-blown fire drill in a week. Any AI like that on your radar? And so the idea of that is to really position today versus future. Is the future a picture that you envision? And if so, usually the meeting books itself from there. And I like how you asked that question, Ron, and you actually slowed your pace down significantly with that question, because that is a pretty big question. Have you ever considered? And there was a lot of detail provided to that question. So I'm not sure, is that something that you typically do as you slow down the pace on that question specifically? Oh, for sure. Yeah, slow and low. So when you slow down and your voice lowers a little bit, and I try to be very conscientious of this at this point in the call, and I also train folks on, on tonality and stuff so you can learn these tones, it naturally triggers in the person's brain that they're hearing something important and they need to pay attention. That's when, in this third question, you have something resembling your value proposition. That is where you do a version of a pitch that is actually asking them if they've ever considered, insert your value proposition, open-ended question. Has, have you, uh, is AI like that on your radar? And usually, even though that sounds like a yes, no question, they usually say something like, yeah, it's on my radar and, and they go into it. Or no, it's not on my radar, but I've never really considered it. You can always follow up with, uh -huh. here's the, uh, the ask, would it be crazy if we found 20 or 30 minutes sometime this week, maybe on Friday, where I can share a little bit more about how we might be able to help you 
identify those kinds of customers. And here's how to close the call the right way to book the meeting. The bottom line is asking for the meeting. Be specific, be super clear. Like I'm asking you for time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Be super specific in the scheduling in terms of the time and then confirm and reinforce what it is you're going to do and what you expect them to do. For those of you who are booking time for an account executive, let them know that. Say, hey, by the way, I'm going to bring on Johnny. He's my account executive. He's the product expert who can go through all the questions you might have with you. But there's a few more rules, and these, this is where the data comes in. you got to ask for this time soon because the data uh -huh. shows that after only five business days, you start to see a pretty big drop off in show rates. And after 10, there's a drastic drop off in show rates, which means by scheduling the next call for the next five business days and no more than 10, that's two weeks max, you increase your chances of having the prospect show up. And the last one, which is crazy that I have to say this, is don't forget to follow up before the call. Hey, really excited. If you use um, G Suite, you just hit the little email button in the event and say, looking forward to this. If you use Outlook, there's a similar functionality where you just hit the email button in the event and it sends an email to them with the event details 24 hours before. There is software like Calendly that will automate that stuff too, which is a good feature yep. too. Because, you know, that way you can just remind them that like, hey, did something come up? Do you need to move it? Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow. You do those things, you should see a show rate above 80%. And certainly if you're really hitting it above 90%. Cold calling is so, so difficult. If you're picking up the phone today as an SDR, an account executive, a VP of sales, a business owner, kudos to you because 99.99% .99 of people do not have the you know what to do that on a daily basis. That's why we get paid the big bucks. Check out this video right here where I handle the most common cold call objections blindfolded. Thanks for watching guys. We appreciate you.